digest uh, so many uh, different things. Uh, but this panel is uh, something that I think is going to be uh, the highlight of the day, uh, as we are covering uh, a very important subject, which is the, uh, the metaverse. So this panel is going to be uh, co-host with uh, my partner and um, business partner and also book partner, David Ferguson. And uh, we would like just to invite the uh, speakers, if you can join us here, and uh, we, will, we will start. This room is going to get very busy in 40 minutes, <laughs> as uh, we will have uh, open bar. So um, get good places before that get very, very busy. Well, welcome everybody. Um, it's only Wednesday, but it feels like Friday, and I know uh, I know this day, like the two uh, before it, have been busy for everyone. Um, I, I think the title for tonight's session is is particularly appropriate, and as I'm sure many of you recognize, I should hold the microphone closer. I'm sure many of you recognize the uh, the, the reference uh, to CERN, the home of the World Wide Web, in the theme of tonight's session, Geneva 3.0. Um, Geneva is also home to uh, many of the world's leading humanitarian initiatives and I think it's only fitting that one of the leading technology companies there, uh, WiseKey, born in Geneva, has the security, equality and advancement of humanity at its core. And it's the vision of, of WiseKey founder Carlos Moreira that Geneva play a pivotal role in the establishment of a trusted global protocol for the humanity technology relationship in Web 3.0. And this event represents the formal introduction of that mission to the public. And as a, as a Davos pioneer, uh, I can't think of, uh, of a better place uh, for Carlos to introduce this initiative. Carlos, would you like to say a couple of words about that? Thank you very much, David. And uh, thank you for the panelists and the panel and for the uh, audience. So uh, as David mentioned, um, the uh, subject uh, of this year in the World Economic Forum is to build partnerships. And uh, as you maybe um, witnessed in the previous roundtable with the Tech Accord, uh, it is essential that partnership uh, happens. And, and when we say partnership, it cannot only be driven by uh, revenue or, or, or business. It's actually uh, solving the complex projects and this co complex uh, things that the society is facing. We are in a, in a complex world that is getting more complex on, on, on daily basis. So, one of the meeting points of that complexity is the metaverse. In all the meetings we had this week and continue having, uh, there is, a, even on the meeting uh, we just had uh, on, on the roundtable before, there is a consensus that the metaverse could become the uh, glue that brings all these technologies in a real environment, an environment where we can see results. And in, in that line of thought, we, we obviously position Geneva because Geneva is not only the uh, the home of Wiseki, we, we started in Geneva. I, I also worked in the United Nations in Geneva for many years. But it's also the place where the World Wide Web was invented, which is Web 1.0. And now everybody's talking about Web 3.0. And uh, obviously, Geneva has an important role in that uh, evolution of the web. As a Web 2.0 created some complexities in what concerns privacy, the way uh, some companies have been using our data the way our, our identities have become out of our control. So th there is a remedy that the metaverse, the web 3.0 could, uh, could, uh, could facilitate. Uh, and this is gonna be the subject of, of, of today and I give you back uh, to you to the moderate because I think if we can come in with some kind of concrete architecture uh, on this web 3.0 with a neutral trust model, which is the one that Switzerland has been advocating, uh, we will have already a, a very important milestone achieved. I pass you. Thank you, Carlos. And I think as you all know, uh, trust was at the root of, of an initiative that was born here. And it was conceived here following a conversation between Carlos and I and Tim Berners-Lee in, in 2018. And we were very proud after workshopping the concept further here at Davos to be able to introduce the transhuman code in 2020. The world changed, of course, uh, rather dramatically following that introduction. but of 
interestingly, that relationship between humanity and technology has stayed at the forefront. And it's formed many of the dialogues that we've been having over the last couple of days. And I know our panel members that are assembled here tonight will be pleased to share their insight and, and perspective on where we are and, and where we're going as we move into 3.0. The uh, distributed to you uh, when you came in this evening was a copy of our progress report. It's a, uh, a glimpse into uh, what's to come later this spring as we revisit each of the 12 elements of our life ecosystem and how humanity and technology are advancing and how trust can be best established and how the human can be best served. We'd like to invite all of you to contribute uh, to this next chapter um, in the Transhuman Code. And so we invite you, perhaps uh, wise key people that are here in the room, if you can raise your hands. If you're interested to contribute to the next generation of, uh, of the Transhuman Code, the Progress Report, please reach out to any of the wise key staff that are here tonight and it would be our pleasure to engage with you. But now let me introduce you uh, to our esteemed panelists. Each of these individuals has been a participant and a contributor in Web 1.0 and 2.0, and so we think it's only fitting that they share those experiences and also give us a glimpse into what they're working on and what their outlook is for Web 3.0. Um, our first uh, speaker this evening, Pierre Modet. Pierre is the Chief Digital Transformation Officer at WiseKey, and I'll ask you a little later to share your background leading into this role, of course, and, and where you're going next. Daniel Karemi, many of you would recognize as the former head of technology for the World Economic Forum. Um, Daniel is, uh, is here as the co-founder of the Edgewoods Institute, actively advising, and I know you'll share more detail with us, uh, organizations, corporations, and governments around the world today on Web 3.0. Uh, Mauricio Benavides uh, from Metabase is here tonight from Mexico, um, a pioneer in cybersecurity and now actively focused on where and how we're going to engage and protect ourselves in the metaverse. Um, Hossein Ranama, I'm sure many of you would recognize uh, from his work here at the WEF in the past, uh, the CEO of Flybits, a pioneer in in uh, fintech, uh, as well as uh, an active uh, guide and educator, both with MIT and Toronto Metropolitan University. And uh, last but not least, uh, Murat uh, Sinita Pozov, the chairman of the Integral Group, uh, a, a Davos veteran, and of course a Geneva veteran who's been witness to that convergence and the need to ensure that, uh, that humanity uh, capitalism and technology are all aligned. Pierre, let's uh, start with you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, David. Good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you uh, for your words, David. It's a, it's a great pleasure for me to answer to, you, to your question. The question is, uh, what is the next issue with, uh, with the Web 3.0, especially in Geneva? As uh, Carlos mentioned, the, the title of the, the WEF this year is cooperation is in a fragmented world. And I think that's the, the issue, I, I heard many conferences uh, today and yesterday, is to put together a lot of data and a lot of system. And to, to put that together with standards, with the rules. And I think that uh, Geneva, as a former mayor of Geneva especially, Geneva could be the place uh, with the history, with the CERN, with the, the invention of the web, where humanity meets technology, the place where we can put together these two issues, where we can uh, answer to the question, not only where, but uh, who. Who, that means in the web 3.0, not only the GAFAM, but also the citizens, uh, the, the, the human people who are involved in the human rights with the environment, environmental issues. All these questions are, are discussed in, in Geneva, and I think this issue uh, could be discussed in this uh, in DC. That is my, my point to, to start the discussion. Uh, I am not from Geneva, but I couldn't agree more with Pierre, what you said. I, and if you think about it, you know, why is such a unique place? Ever since John Calvin picked that place to redefine the protocols of human interaction and way back before technology was even the thing, he put it on the you know, church door right there in Geneva which was later facilitated by the printing press and so on. 
So Geneva has a tradition of challenging the assumptions, making things happen, but in a way that is also quite unique manifestation at an international level of what the unique Swiss style of governance is, which is consensus building, changing of the, you know, even the presidency changes. So it's like a, it, it's the same way of governance, but at international level on the steroids. Now, everybody forgets that, yes, internet was born in California, but the web was born in Geneva. And although the title is Web.3, I actually truly believe that right now we're still at internet 3.0. Uh, we are not yet at Web 3.0, because what we're seeing, we're seeing emergence of tech, we're seeing emergence of applications, and truly it's when the pages will start talking to each other, interoperability, trust, that's when Web 3.0 will be born. Right now we're still in California stage, but we're moving very quickly, hopefully on the Swiss air, to Geneva. Thank you. Even take us even further south of the border, Mauricio. Yeah, no, thank you for the invitation, and uh, I, I couldn't echo more than this. You know, I think uh, one of the things that we experience is uh, there's no boundaries in this type of things. There's no frontiers. When you start going into the web and you start going into places like that, there's no, no boundaries anywhere. So I think the way we look at it is uh, we always see what's going on in Geneva to see how regulation is impacting because then after you put the regulation in place, you need to make sure that you execute it, no? Because you could have everything as to how it should be done, but one of the most important things is how it's being applied in the world. And when we look at it from a cybersecurity perspective, it's very interesting because we keep seeing and hearing that the attacks continue to go, they, they keep growing, they keep understanding that we keep getting more connected to, to the internet. And obviously from our perspective, we need to make sure that that world is also super connected. So that's why we believe that being here in Geneva, understanding w where those policies, where Web 3.0 is going, et cetera, makes a huge importance uh, with the different regions, areas around the world. And again, since there's no boundaries when you're there, there's no frontiers, there's nothing, we need to make sure that that execution is taking place properly and people are well informed, so. Thank you, Mauricio. Uh, one of our key interest areas, especially at, at Flybits, is to really understand how this new internet, a lot of us call it Web 3.0, the internet of value, the new internet, can look like. And one aspect that we are very interested in is that whether the a uh, channel is gonna be metaverse or immersive experiences, we think that it's a perfect fabric to bring a lot of industries together to collaborate. Up until now, even if you look at the enterprise internet, it's pretty verticalized. Oh, I need a CRM in the finance industry, or I need it for healthcare, or I need it for insurance. One of the key areas that we are seeing, especially because of the physics of data, is that all of them are converging and Metaverse has a fantastic power to bring them together. So one of the key um, initiatives that we have called the Open Dome, that you will see a demo of that today, is to bring financial institutions, healthcare organizations, insurance companies, travel companies, all together, and based on the permission and consent of the data, the data will be rendered in such immersive experiences based on the need of the user. So if you think about Web 1.0, which was all about content, first you had to code your HTML pages, then you had web authoring tools. And now we are building the same set of tools for any organization to be able to build these data-driven predictive services in immersive environments, while the data is not co-located. Because we are all interested in how great Metaverse looks like, but we are not really talking about, well, how do we render such great information? Do we still expect everyone to co-locate their data into one centralized data lake? I really don't think that's going to happen. So a lot of the protocols that we are working on is that how do we allow different organizations to ask questions from each other's data and based on the permission of the user, create these next generation experiences for their end users. And we will share a video with you later today so that you can get some ideas on how it can look like. Thank you, Hossein. Uh, several comments from my side. I'm in the business, uh, real commodity trading, physical commodity trading, and uh, why it's important for us Web 3.0, and then I will come also to Geneva, and Geneva role in it. Uh, several years ago, uh, we started the new project, which we called Electronic Trader. 
which could allow uh, computer or artificial intelligence to trade physical commodities. But in order to do this, uh, we needed to collect uh, various fragmented data from various sources on the price, on the logistics, on the conditions, and so on and so on. And after a couple of years of exercise, we didn't manage. We understood that data is so fragmented, and for that, uh, our system cannot understand all of these formats, all of this data. And here, I think Web 3.0, there's a good opportunity with the semantic web where uh, all this data could be somehow translated into, into the common format. Uh, and uh, now about Geneva. Uh, we have several problems now, and one of the problems is that uh, looks like today the tendency is that uh, internet or web uh, could be split or separated by several blocks uh, because of the regulations. Let's say American block, European Union block, Chinese block, Russian block, and we can continue. Even some countries uh, went further, they created uh, some kind of internal inter internet called intranet. Daniel knows <laughs> the story. No, several countries did this. Uh, and at the end, uh, uh, there is no mechanism uh, how uh, to introduce the regulations into the internet on the global level. And here, Geneva, with the waste experience with United Nations, United Nations technology agencies, uh, with uh, uh, good professional companies like Weisky and a lot of others, uh, really could play a role uh, to bring the st uh, standards and regulations. And the one small comment, a little bit negative on the metaverse. Uh, I think for metaverse, although <laughs> I hate to talk about regulations, especially uh, in the digital side, but uh, there is a big probability that some part of our population will migrate from the, our difficult, problematic reality with the never-ending crises uh, into the beautiful world of virtual world of metaverse. And uh, we need to deal with this, and we need also to regulate. Thank you. Thank you, Murat. Pierre, I think you would agree that Geneva has permission. Uh, Daniel has uh, very uh, eloquently uh, shared the history of, uh, of Geneva how you've come to be where you are today. Um, what does that process look like, do you think, to, to talk to Murat's point of how, how and could the world allow Geneva to, to really set the standard for Web 3.0? It's a very good question. I definitely agree with this uh, consensual position, but uh, the, the right question is, is how. How to, to go in this direction? That's very, uh, that's right. That, uh, the, the term convergence, the, the merge between the data are, are very central. But also, I have to, to, to give another argument, uh, maybe a little bit paradoxical, but a typical Swiss argument. We are focused on a decentralized system, and that, that is very important also in the direction of uh, a web 3.0 oriented on the, on, the, um, on the citizens. I mean, we, the, the solution of a, a big centralization is not a solution. And that is in the, in the Swiss DNA to understand that. And maybe to, 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 to answer to your question, the right way to go in this direction is to uh, focus on the basis on the human rights, on the rights, on the, you, you spoke about um, the, the fact that um, the, the people have to, to agree with the, the data transfer, with the, the data uh, ownership. And I think we have to discuss first in Geneva, in this human rights uh, city, about the rights in the web uh, 3.0, the rights of the citizen. That is maybe the, the start point to, uh, to develop the, 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 the question to how go in, the, in this direction. Thank you. Um, uh, Daniel, um, uh, Web 2.0 was, uh, was in its uh, raw infancy, I think, when, uh, when you accepted the challenge from the World Economic Forum to bring technology into the dialogue. I know that's the origin of, of your relationship with Carlos. Since that, we've seen the emergence of, the explosion of, in some cases, the implosion of the platforms that, uh, that have, uh, have wreaked havoc in, uh, in the minds of, of those that want to ensure that the human is is at the center of gravity with technology. Um, what does it look like today for you? Well, and, and you, you actually hitting uh, the question right there where I wanted to go, so thank you for pitching it without us coordinating, just to be clear. But I think that's where Geneva is also extremely well positioned because Geneva always takes a very interesting approach, which is forward and optimistic looking with the full awareness of all the risks that come along with it. Do you know that the genre, that the genre of um, artificial intelligence taking over 
the world was actually born in Geneva. Wow. So Frankenstein, as an idea, was conceived in a beautiful mansion just outside of Colony, mm. and we all know where that went, and that is just explosion of the genre, right? It was the first artificial intelligence, if you will. But the beauty of it, of course, in, in all seriousness, is that Geneva has a long tradition of making sure that something that is difficult and what is thought under as a purview of states or other actors that are powerful in international stage, taking it away, making sure that the systems talk to each other and are human-centric. Let me give you an example. The, the, the very first internationalization period is not the United Nations, it's the, the, the universal one, but the, the first one was International Postal Union, which is still headquartered in Bern. <laughs> And it was about interconnection of system. You had a postal system in your country that needed to connect with the postal system in the other country. Interconnection at its best. The other thing, when the genius of Gen in, in, in Geneva s said, look, the wars will always be there. The, the, the powers will fight. But how can we make it human-centric and create it the whole field of humanitarian law? That's also Geneva right there for you. So, you know, I, I, I know that you were hoping for a future-focused panel, but in order for us to, to go into the future, we have to understand the past. Indeed. Right. Mauricio, I know you're, you're spending time across the globe. Uh, you're uh, uh, headquartered in, in Mexico, but of course the applications of your work are, are felt from uh, corner to corner. Uh, what, what observations can you make? Uh, perhaps you have an opinion on, on Geneva and its future role. I'm also interested to know um, are, are you seeing significant variances in terms of, of how the human um, will remain uh, significant, relevant in technological advancement from market to market? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I spend a lot of time on the technology aspect in San Francisco, so that also brings a, a really interesting component, no? I mean, today we're talking about uh, the guy that started building uh, flying cars, no? There's a bunch of companies where you start integrating chips into the in, in the, to people. No, very very uh, interesting aspects. So I think I think what I what I've seen in the last couple of days here in uh, in Davos is a lot of conversations, a lot of people with different ideas. Uh, I think the, the 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 terms are still to be defined uh, because you have different positions, and I think that's why being here makes it super interesting because it's about dialogue, it's about collaboration. And it's about understanding on what makes sense as the world moves into something like that. No? So it's interesting because depending on what type of panels you go into or who do you talk to and what industries they're in, uh, they, they, they have a completely different view or, or, or a different view of exactly what they're thinking that the future is going to look like. But I think these type of conversations in the short term are needed so that way as a collaboration entity in Geneva, because the experience and, and the long term, you know, at the end of the day there's a like a common point, because at the end of the day, to make it scalable, it has to be common, no? And I, I love what Jose is saying is, you know, a lot of things get combined, and for that to happen, you know, there has to be some common grounds at some point to make sure that everybody's moving towards the same direction. Because if not, I mean, you start bringing the virtual reality aspect, and you start bringing no different terms, and whether it's uh, the, the industry, not the industry, how do you bring all those pieces together? So, so I think, that dialogue is happening now. It's super interesting. And I think uh, there's a central point, which is Geneva, to make sure that those conversations happen and uh, it gets more aligned, no? Hussein, I think you would agree that there's more conversation uh, during these last couple of days uh, about that relationship between humanity and technology, particularly as it pertains to AI and, and how we're going to use the, the metaverse in particular. Um, I think uh, in addition to your uh, commercial business focus, I referenced your work at, at MIT and, and what was Ryerson, now Toronto Metropolitan University. What I didn't share, however, is that Hossein is the co-founder of what is consistently ranked for, I don't know, 16, 18 years to date, the number one business accelerator and uh, incubator in the world. And I know that, that when you come here, not, not only do you come to share wisdom, but you also come to glean wisdom and bring that back to students and, and those that you're encouraging to innovate. So I'm, I'm curious to hear just some of your key takeaways from the last couple of days. Thanks, Dave. I think one thing that is at least interesting for our group is that symbiosis between the real world, us, and the new internet. If you look at a lot of the new metaverse activities, it tries to completely lock down 
in a virtual world, which has nothing to do with what we experience in the real world. Um, the interesting thing is, and the set of protocols and the algorithmics that are needed is, how do we bring these two together? Uh, examples that some of our students are working on. If you expect your children and kids to spend a lot of time on um, worlds like worlds of Warcraft and roadblocks, well, tie it back to their Fitbit. If they are not exercising or not moving, right, deactivate things, right? Um, think about a bank in a metaverse, right? Go to a retail store, not necessarily do online shopping, but what you buy in that real store. And when you develop relationships, those signals will find their way into the virtual world, really creating that nice fabric of symbiosis between the real world and the virtual world. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned is also very important, um, which is the other way around. When I work with our students, the mindset of a graduate student in a research lab or a Web3 class is, okay, professor, give me the data and I'll do my project or I will write my thesis. Unfortunately, that mindset does not work in the real world. How many entrepreneurs and founders we see that they are like, I have this amazing AI capability, but no one gives me the data. Well, of course, no one should give you the data because we need now portability protocols that without moving the data, we now gain the ability to ask questions from the data. This is where uh, zero knowledge proofs comes into to action, homomorphic encryption, ability to agree on policies rather than data moving. And I think by creating literacy around that, we now have a next generation of entrepreneurs and researchers that are building the right set of tools for the future of the internet. Worrying less about the complexity of IT and, and al algorithms, but more about the creative outcomes, what we now call creative AI, that really allows us to address key pain points that we are facing in this fragmented world. You're right, I can't think of a better way to, to segue into this ongoing discussion that I know Hussein wants to have with you about the metaverse than perhaps to show a video of, uh, of what you're doing with Flybits. Can we cue that? So the video that you're about to see is an initiative that my team built at Flybits called the Open Dome. We don't call it a metaverse or anything to do with meta. It's a dome that can render open and public data. So we are now working with large financial institutions, large telecom carriers, large, large insurance providers, and really allowing users to render their information in a decision space. And then we use AI without centralizing the data to really tell the users, well, what is the relationship between your assets versus when you want to retire versus how you can pay your mortgage faster. And I allow you to use the metaverse to plan your life better. I'm not sure if it's playing. Are we ready to go, Michael? Yeah. yeah. Do we have sound? No, no. Yep. We'll yeah. So okay, these are examples, again, based on a few fundamentals. The new metaverse cannot have data centralized and silos. The new metaverse should understand different data contracts. Some of this data belongs not to the company, but to users. Some of this data is public. Some of this data is proprietary. Let's build tools that we take care of that complexity and through creating transparency, auditability, we can now allow people to build these experiences. The second thing that is important in Open Dome is we actually don't believe the hardware is ready for mainstream metaverse adoption. So we are now building omni-channel capabilities that you can render the same metaverse in uh, on your phone, on a web browser, and if you wa want to wear a headset, you can do that. We are working with banks now. We are doing LiDAR scanning of real branches that if you want to meet with your real financial advisor, you go there, you see all your portfolio, but you can have a Zoom conversation with a real person in the metaverse. So bringing these two worlds are, are very, very important uh, to us. Uh, then we are applying AI on this fabric. Like if you bring your data from your airline 
your grocery store, your telecom carrier? Do we understand the context and the ontologies of that data, allowing you to personalize your metaverse for what's relevant to you? There's a view about the metaverse that, oh, who's going to win that race? Well, maybe there is a view on that. I actually think every single user should have the ability and authority to create their own personalized metaverse, collecting and aggregating and synthesizing their data, and then bring AI capabilities to understand the, 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 the relevance of that. If you know about my insurance policy, if you know about my spending habits, if you even have access to some clinical data, which is very <laughs> sensitive, but I can have it encrypted on my local chipset, through tokens, I can truly understand the relationships and help you to come to this personalized metaverse and interact with it without worrying about making it too collaborative and, and too social. Last thing I say is this by no means what other entities are doing like Meta and others are, are wrong. That's a different type of a metaverse to look at, which is more about collaboration and, and learning and, and marketing. This is a different view that I had, and I wanted to share it with, uh, with our friends here. So I think ra rather than setting you up for a debate, Murad, I thought you should hear a perspective on the metaverse that's real, because you have multiple banks around the world now engaging with you, and it's all focused <laughs> on not only the establishment of, of your content and your resources, but your ability to be able to pack them and travel with them to wherever you think you should go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the response we were hoping for. No, there, it, we're, we're, we're at such an early inflection point yeah. at, at this time. And what, what's encouraging, and Carlos, I know you'd like to speak more to this this evening, is that trust is at the center of it. And the desire to ensure that it's human first and that, that wasn't the conversation that was happening across the web three years ago. No, Metaverse is the future, definitely. And uh, that's why I think uh, Facebook was renamed to Meta <laughs> at certain stage, and I understood this. Uh, and, uh, and we should be ready for that future. And uh, to be ready for something unknown, we should try to predict what could happen, uh, to check the possible outcomes, possible problems, and we need to deal with these problems. And again, back to the regulations, and I think Metaverse is exactly the uh, application for the proper regulations. Because it could be very dangerous, it could be very useful, it could be very nice, it could be very bad, it depends how you will structure this. Uh, and here again, uh, back, to the Gene back to Geneva, I think Geneva could play a really important role in that. Uh, because I don't see any other place in the world uh, which could be neutral, having great reputation, uh, having great capabilities. Uh, like in Geneva, we have all possible communities, starting from the traders communities, finance communities, insurance communities. Uh, uh, then we are going to the international com organization communities, United Nations, and uh, even World Economic Forum is in Geneva at the end. Uh, and uh, we have uh, cybersecurity community, uh, we have now metaverse community, and uh, uh, everything is available. Uh, just we need also to stimulate all these guys to talk between each other and come with the proper solutions, with the proposals. And then because of the reputation on the new international reputation of Geneva, I think it will be doable to establish or position Geneva like as one or possibly the main important center for the internet regulation uh, for the world. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, this is the real task and I think Geneva uh, should really work on this together with the Swiss government and the Swiss government institutions. And uh, with all of us together and uh, starting from Weski, from Carlos with his great ideas. Thank you. Well, this, this panel, I think, is, uh, is very thoughtfully, as curated by Carlos, bookended by a corporate leader uh, based in Geneva, uh, a former and continuing, uh, continually aspiring government leader uh, here in Pierre. Pierre, would you like to respond? Yes, maybe, maybe uh, another argument uh, that appears very clearly to me uh, after the, 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 the little film. I think uh, a challenge in the Web 3.0 is the convergence between the private sector and the public sector. And uh, definitely the, the ability to work together, but also to, to increase, for example, the standards. Uh, I, I give you two examples. ISO, which is a, a private uh, company, but very important uh, for the world, and ITU, 
with a new, a new boss uh, since the, the beginning of uh, January, have to, to work together to ensure the development of the, of the web. And that could only uh, happen in Geneva. The, the, the fact that private and public sector have to work together, but we have to wake up. Uh, honestly, I think uh, neutrality is very important, but we have to stay neutral, maybe at first, and uh, it's maybe a message to the, the Swiss government, uh, to, to give the condition to have trust uh, merge between the private and public and, uh, uh, and good standard focused on the human rights. I think we have all the ingredients to make something very, very interesting, but we have to do it. I think uh, we will try to do it with Waste Scheme. Thank you. Uh, perfect closing remarks as we come up on time. Uh, Daniel, what, what would you like to leave us with? Well, I, I think it's, uh, if you hear Web 3.0, what do you think about it? It's evolution, right? It's evolution from Web 0 to, to and, and, and it, when it comes to metaverse, we are still all reptiles because if you think about it, what do people do in Roblox? Change skins, right? So as evolution progresses, soon we will be mammals and then we will become truly human-centered metaverse be beings. No, no, I think uh, it's, it's a very uh, interesting topic that we, we should be putting a lot of attention to because I think long term on a human perspective is going to have a big impact. You know? However we started today is going to have uh, how the, the world is going to be acting, performing, executing in many, many years after. You know? So I think it's critical to make sure that all this is uh, planned, done properly, and uh, that we're paying attention to make sure that, you know, over the years we're doing the right things to make the world better, no? Yeah, I think on my side, I'm, I'm less worried about the technological aspect of it, uh, but more focused on the ethical aspect of it, and especially on the literacy side of things, that how do we really have a new generation that are well trained on what data means, what is privacy, how do I share my data, how do I benefit from these amazing digital channels, and my interest is to do that very early on, like start having children's books on privacy and, and data sharing rather than waiting until they are teenagers. And I think if we can really help with those literacy programs from K-12 while technology is being implemented and adopted, that convergence between our human capital and technological capital will really allow us to build a great ecosystem. Thank you, Hussein. Just three words, cooperation, cooperation, and cooperation. Uh, and thank you, Carlos, for initiating these discussions. Carlos? And, <laughs> and uh, even he did the almost impossible thing. Daniel was planned to mention this. I will mention, yeah. He brought two speakers from Turkmenistan to the same panel in Davos. <laughs> <laughs> that may be a first. <laughs> yeah. And uh, from our side, hope we'll do some, something together also during the Caspian Week next January here in Davos. We'll plan something good, yes. Thank you. So, yeah, so uh, um, I, I say, but, but back to your point, uh, Facebook is meta and uh, Geneva is the verse, right? Um, the, the, uh, the metaverse being a virtual space requires gates. You have to bring the, the physical world to the virtual world. And those gates are being constructed around the world. So you have Singapore, I was in Seychelles with the Prime Minister where Wiseki has done a project for the first island on the metaverse. Uh, Wiseki have delivered that project. And I can see the international trend where cities are becoming more and more focus in becoming a gate. Why a gate? It's like in a highway, you need a gate to access to the main road. And, and those gates are, needs to be authenticated gates, needs to be gates where you're gonna have, as Pierre say, standardization, where interoperability is gonna be required by international organizations. And they are still very much in the analog world. I mean, if you visit all these organizations in Geneva and you have one-to-one -one discussions with them, you immediately realize that they are still thinking as an analog organization. They do standards, but those standards are done in an analog way. They don't necessarily understand the final destination of those standards. So I think uh, the molecularization of that process, I mean, studying where are the best practices around the world and extract, rather than calling ITU or WIPO or WHO, call best practices. What do you have in your organization that molecularize can be integrated in a bigger body, which is the metaverse that we are building. And, and, and it has to be driven by many sectors. Today here, and that has been my 
focus is to give a glance of, of where a small company like WiseKey is doing in the space sector, in the NFT sector with WiseArt, in the metaverse sector, in the cybersecurity sector with the TechAccord Roundtable, which is actually one of the leading think tanks now in cybersecurity, used by the World Economic Forum to trial new cybersecurity models. So this cooperation is starting to happen and we are very happy that this room here i was congratulating the uh, director of, of this hotel because i mentioned to him the first time i came here i was a startup and actually now i am on the nasdaq so that progression happened in that room every year we have become year after year while pierre was minister and and we have been briefing the 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 community about the advances of technology and in many areas we have become we have been thought leaders so now the the thought leader process is cooperation and I fully endorse the vision of partnership of the World Economic Forum we are here to help we are here to bring our, our piece of experience in, in, in our in our uh, in our side and bring this this network of people like um, Murat I mean uh, Murat is trying to do something that has never been done before which is creating an ecosystem in the Caspian region this is a complex uh, region of the world that, that requires a lot of effort and, and he has done an amazing work by becoming a thought leader here in Davos on, on his Caspian Caspian Week. So this is the uh, invitation to everybody in this uh, in this uh, panel, in this room, and, and uh, following us online, is that let's build uh, a, a collaboration model which will not be based on revenue or, or making money. It should be based on creating really a better state of the world because we are in that inflation point that if we don't find solutions now, including sustainability solutions, we're gonna be in danger. So um, I'd just like to thank you for your moderation, thanks the panel, and uh, thank everybody. Again, that has been a heavy day. We, we started at three and, and there has been so many uh, great ideas. And we love to continue doing the same thing next year and make it bigger and bigger. Thank you for, thank for your moderation you. too.